Party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Pray the Show. It's Monday all day long into the evening till midnight. It is Monday. It is the Mondayest Mondays of them all. I tell you what, I Sundayed really, really hard, but we're here on a Monday. Last Monday, we were not here because I Sundayed even harder. Hot news, uh, Natalie, in the hot seat, hanging out, looking lovely as always. Thanks. I mean, you're not party foul, Steve Lovely. I know. Nobody's at that. Look, look at, at that him. Look at that face smile. So beautiful Monday there. face. People love that Oilers hat every time you put that thing up there. They're like, how old is that hat if it's a Houston Oilers hat? And it's like, my God, people, you can get a hat with anything on it. (laughs) (laughs) You can't find them anywhere because I've ordered them all. Oh, man, it's Monday. We're here to make fun of everybody, to mock you, to fat shame everything. It's fun. Oh, mm-hmm. boy, oh, boy. There's lots of drama over the weekend. There lots was a of stuff. lot. Uh, I, I'm just waiting on a flaming meteor to hit uh, uh, the earth, and we're just going to call it July. <laughs> on to the next, baby. Yeah, I, I, I said this a thousand times. We're living out Jumanji. We're on level six. Yeah, I, we're going to break all that down for you. Why does it seem like everything has gone so crazy? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to break down some of the... Eh, some of the headlines that are out there, because some of them are fun, some of them are not so fun, but we're going to talk about them, because they matter, and they matter to all of our lives, and we're just going to try to have a nice, relaxed, gentle conversation. I told Candace this morning, Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, I sent her a text message, I said, you know, they, they keep saying we're a show that has comedy in it, and we get into all this serious stuff. Well, today's no different. We're going to be very serious. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, always as lovely as ever, sitting there. Behind the helm, sitting next to the puppet master, Mark, driving us into the nether regions, which are all things chaos on planet Earth. You guys have a good weekend? Pretty good? <laughs> yeah, it was good. I was moving this weekend, so a lot of... Uh... <laughs> you are what? You are moving? I was moving, yeah. Thanks so. for not what, calling. What's your new address? <laughs> Let me tell it to everyone out there right now. Yeah, no. Leave it to, uh, leave it to old girl here to check everybody's address. See, if y'all don't know... If y'all don't, I don't know if we've talked about this ever on the show... But anytime we have a guest, immediately Hot News wants to know what their address is. Literal, physical number address. True. Street address. Because you want to Google Earth them or whatever. You want a satellite picture, look at their house. Everybody's really kind of... What is your motivation on that? I don't know, but like nine out of ten people have given me their address. I, they, I mean, I've never heard anybody turn you down. And then we've I've Googled it, and then just to see, you know, see, see where, what they're, neighborhood they're, where they're, they're hanging. See if we, they're in a the trailer park, you know... Today around Studio 22 and in the Blaze Studios, it feels like we're 15% back to normal because there's people in the building that we haven't seen in like three months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that whatever. I mean, uh, but Candace Owens is in the house. I saw her. She's in. We ran across her there in the the makeup room, and I was thinking about, why don't you try to get her address? (laughs) I know. (laughs) That that one ain't coming out so fast. I'll try. Uh, We'll see. But yeah, we were busy with Candice a little bit. That was a good surprise. I didn't expect to see her today. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Um, 45 million people are unemployed. We are $25 trillion in debt. Uh, our America's cities are on fire. Mm-hmm. Over 100,000 people have died because of a pandemic, but thousands of people gather together in New York City to say that black trans lives matter and twitter was a flutter with everyone being so proud so proud that this moment has come Mm -hmm. you people are crazy that's the level of stupid we've gotten to steve Burles in texas doesn't even know anything's going on (laughs) (laughs) i promise you i I was out in town uh yesterday Burles is just like normal we i mean we just craziness man that's going on I, uh, my, my daughters that live across the country, they, they texted me, uh, my two oldest daughters, they texted me and they said, Hey, uh, are you okay with everything that's going on and stuff like that? And I'm like, honey, we, we just fine. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You ain't got to worry about nothing with us. Uh, it's crazy. I had a post that was pulled down yesterday because so many people reported it. I was just, it was just a, it was humor that was beneath me. And so many people Not were really. offended by it. You don't understand how low I can go. I don't know how many times I got to tell you folks this. Was that the fat woman with the shirt on that oh, said, gosh. I can't breathe? Yeah. 
Okay. Who was also wearing a mask. Oh, wearing a mask. Also wearing a mask. Well, if, and you tried to spread her message, <laughs> and people took offense to you trying to help a black lady spread yeah. her message. Black fat lives matter. Yeah. They do. I, I'm appalled. Yeah. That people. Everybody, were you don't know her situation or what her medical condition could be. What? Well, it's probably she's, got something to do with fried chicken. She's telling you she may have sleep apnea, all kinds of stuff. She can't breathe. She could, I, I doubt she can breathe. Yeah. So I had that social media post that was pulled down yesterday. And we've gotten to a point where it's ridiculous. You can't have fun. You can't make any have any opinions you can't put your thoughts on news stories out there mm -hmm. we got flagged yesterday for something that was a blaze tv article blaze media article that said that it is uh fake news and i read the headline compared to what they said and i was like we didn't say fake news at all mm -hmm. uh i had the i had the humor meme that was pulled down yesterday i mean it's just dumb I mean, it was funny it was funny <laughs> oh my god you're making fun of people all right it's just a matter of time. We're already starting to see censorship happen. We're, we're starting to see there's going to be so many places where you're accustomed to getting this show, you're not going to be able to get it anymore because we're going to say something that's going to offend somebody. We've seen it happen over and over again. You guys have got to help us out. I want you to like the videos wherever you can. I want you to share the videos wherever you can so that they get seen. And the biggest thing that I want everybody to do, because I love this, and it's, a, it's an available thing that's not going to go away, Pluto TV. Mm -hmm. Pluto TV, we're on channel 250. Pluto, if you don't know, that's free. It's 24-7 limited live stream uh, deal. You can subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the show. You can watch it. You can become a member at blazetv.com. You get access to the full catalog of shows. Uh, you got to go out there, put your money where your mouth is. And, and again, like with Pluto, it's free. So They have out. the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleader show on. Do they? That on I mean, Pluto there's nothing well. you can't watch. Yeah, it's a hit. On Pluto. Mm -hmm. Our show's on 6 o'clock Central every night, Monday through Thursday. Uh, so you can watch it when you want, where you want. If you're on Blaze TV, that's the beauty of it. Go back and watch it after the fact. So you should have access to more voices, not less. It's starting to really wear me out. So anyway. Hey, guys. Hey, even though the country is opening up again, some of us are a little bit leery about being in confined spaces with the public. If you're looking for a great gift idea for Father's Day, it's safe and COVID-free. Please consider iTarget Pro. It's one of the coolest ways to dry fire train with your gun at home using their proprietary app and the laser bullet. It's convenient, safe. We'll save you a ton of money on ammunition. I told you about the family that's putting the whole gun range in their garage, different calibers mm -hmm. on each range. <laughs> dry fire training, it's everything, folks. It's going to develop muscle memory. It's going to help you with target reaction, your speed, sight alignment, trigger function, a whole lot more. Uh, iTarget comes in all the major calibers, including 223556, and you can stay sharp with almost any firearm you own. So for Father's Day, I want to give you a 10% off plus free shipping if you use offer code CHAD, C-H-A-D. Don't let circumstances dictate whether or not you're going to train. Take back control with iTarget Pro. That's the letter I, Target Pro com. iTargetPro.com. Offer code CHAD. Be right back. Yeah, seriously, go to blazetv.com slash Chad. Uh, you can use promo code Chad, give you a little discount on the annual subscription. Crazy, 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 crazy stuff going on. And I think that, you know, the thing that is kind of bothering me is now we're just looking for the craziest of the crazy, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, uh, Dr. Jerome, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> who is the Surgeon General? <laughs> He's like a kid. You know, I don't know if you've seen this guy. Uh, smart guy. I mean, no disrespect. But, um, you know, he said we get more freedom if we just put our masks on. That just flies right in the face of everything I just, that feels comfortable with me, Steve. Yeah. You know, to tell me that if you just put your mask on, you won't be as limited. I don't, I have a problem uh, with, with all of that deal. It, it, uh, anyway. I appreciate what they're trying to say, but let me tell you something. Whenever you can have tens of thousands of people that can go out in New York City, uh, Jerome Adams, I, it was driving me crazy. I had to look up Adams. I don't know why I forget that. Forget that. Um, when tens of thousands of people can gather in New York City, which is the epicenter, it's where the majority of COVID deaths have happened, they're going to go out there and they're going to have protest rallies for black trans lives 
matters. I'm like, what is, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, did we really need to, are there that many black trans people in New York City? Maybe I don't, so. I Maybe, I don't think so. I don't think there's that many in the nation. Hmm. I mean, did you see that? I mean, it was a, did you see the video of that? Just gobs of people. Well, there's this opportunity for all these subcultures to jump in on these oh, bigger yeah. movements mm -hmm. and ride on there, yeah. you know, to get their message out, whatever their message is. The causes are dividing at this point. Mm -hmm. So we went from George Floyd and the tragedy that was George Floyd yeah. to now we're at trans lives. I don't, that's, that's a jump that just, that's where it starts to confuse me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that just, that just bug me. And then we had the uh, over the weekend shooting with the uh, uh, Rayshard. Rayshard, what was his last name? Was it, uh, B -B 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 -B? I just we just looked Adams. Was I, it no, Adam? and no. that's Jerome Adams. No. Like Jones, no. I, hold on, I'm I have, horrible I have, with the okay, last name. It's okay. It's okay. I have it right here. Is so, that the guy that was real calm with the cops to begin with, but yeah. then mm -hmm. when they, it was time to be under Brooks. arrest, Brooke Rayshard Brooks. Thank you. Rayshard started Brooks. the scuffle. Yeah, and again, I mean, I mean, no disrespect by not knowing their names, but I, it's just there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I woke up this morning to 18 text messages from 18 different people on that topic alone. Forget mm -hmm. all the others. I mean, if y'all could see my phone in the mornings, it's just crazy. I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to that telephone because I answer people. <laughs> That's the thing. And so now it's just going to keep multiplying. Sort of like these protests. Um, a tragic situation. Have you ever passed out in a drive-thru? I haven't. Well, you don't drink. But <laughs> Have you ever passed out in the drive-thru waiting? No, I have in a parking lot a couple of times, but not I, in a drive-thru. Yeah, I confess that probably twice in my life I have passed out in a Whataburger drive-thru. While you were driving? Yeah, while I was waiting. Wait, uh, right. You know, take a little nap. Two o'clock in the morning, and you, you've just you've had a long night, <laughs> and you're just sitting there. And it, now I woke myself up. Thank God, I but, woke myself up. That's a frequent occurrence. I've been in in Waterburger line at two a.m. in the morning. Had to honk at the guy in oh, front okay. of me because he fell asleep. It does happen. People pass out. People people believe it or not, do drink and drive. Yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. They have parking lots at bars. That's a shocker. Uh, it's not a crime. Let me, let me go out on this limb that I really don't need to, but I just want to say it for clarity's sake. It's not a crime to drink and drive. It's a crime to be over the limit and drive. All right. Now I encourage you don't drink anything and drive. If you've had a, even a sip of alcohol, don't get behind the wheel. That's, that's what, that's, that's what caution says. Um, and in a day and age of Uber and all these different things and cell phones, there's no reason to drink and drive. It's a horrible, horrible thing. This guy passed out in the Wendy's drive-thru. Okay, so all I'm saying is it happens. They come up, they knock on his window. An employee there called the police, if I understand it right. It, police come, knock on the window, no response. Knock on the window, there's no response. They pull the door, it opens. They say, you know, talk to the guy, there's no response. So finally, he reaches in and he shakes him and the guy wakes up. So he was out pretty good. Mm-hmm. I w I'm going to be very transparent. I'm going to confess some things on this show, okay, because I'm going to just use it by point of comparison to myself. Uh, and, and just get over the whole thing. Well, you're white and he was black. We're not, we're not even getting into all that right now. Um, we're just talking about human beings. Quit with the black, white stuff. I remember one time I was, I left a, a, a place that served alcoholic beverages years ago. And I was starting to drive somewhere, and I realized I don't need to be driving. So I pulled into a neighborhood, pulled up to the curb, turned the car off, uh, and went to sleep. Okay? Now, if you do something like that, which I highly recommend you don't, but if you do something like that, you want to make sure that your keys are not within reach. They could still get you for a DWI or a DUI, whatever it is mm. in your state. Uh, you like if you're in a truck, put them put them in the in the in the toolbox or something in the back, but it can't be within reach. I woke up and was cold that morning. It was a winter night, and so what did I do? I cranked the car up and turned the heat on for a minute. Well, that heat hit, and guess what I did? I fell back asleep. I woke up, 
to the knocking <laughs> of a police officer on the window. By all rights and purposes, had he wanted to, uh, he could have taken me to jail. I wasn't operating the vehicle, but the vehicle was operating. Key mm -hmm. was in the ignition. It was cranked up, and I was in it, I, although I was asleep. Got out. At that point in time, there were like five cops that showed up. You know, they loved to swarm. Uh, and so here they come. And this guy, I got out, stepped back there, and... I was I was pretty well sober at that point. Yes, I had drank the night before. This is like seven o'clock in the morning, six thirty in the oh, morning. Oh, got it. Right, uh, sun's up, and I and so anyway, they're putting me through the paces, and and I'm trying to be as respectful as possible in this situation. And I don't remember what I said, but apparently he took something as me being a smart ass at one point in time, and he was like, "I'll put the cuffs on you and take your ass to jail right now." And I was like. I apologize. I don't know what I said that was so, you know. You being smart with me? No, I'm just answering your questions. You know, it's that kind of thing. You cops know who you are, and you know how you are. Uh, I, I ain't giving you all a free pass. I support you, but I ain't giving all of you a free pass. Because <laughs> sometimes sometimes y'all get a little bit, and I respect and understand why you get that way in some cases. Mm -hmm. And then I also disrespect the reason you get that way in other cases. So I'm not anti-police. You can go on there, and you can pretty much fact check me on everything I've ever said. I defend you guys. But I also know how you get. Anyway, uh, somebody pulls up, Mark. Somebody pulls up in an SUV and sees all these cops and stops, rolls down their window and says, somebody just threw a brick through my window. And they're like, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. And he's like, somebody just threw a brick through my window right back here. And they're like, keep it moving, sir, keep it moving. And I'm like, that's what I said. I said, guys, that guy just got vandalized. <laughs> And assaulted, and you're worrying about me sleeping in the car doing the responsible thing. Long story short, they were like, nope, that guy had to drive on. So bottom line, they made me call a friend. He came and picked me up, and they were like, don't you come back and get this car for at least an hour, and that kind of whole deal. Fine. This is where this guy sort of found himself in a situation. They wake him up. He gets out. He has an interaction with these police officers. From what I could tell, these police officers did everything they could to mm -hmm. be as gracious as possible about the thing. The guy agreed to a breathalyzer. He didn't have to do that. Mm -mm. You don't have to agree to a breathalyzer. You don't have to agree to a field sobriety test. Those things are designed to make you guilty. Y'all know it's true. And most of the time, if you're doing a field sobriety test or a breathalyzer, you're guilty. Right. Okay? You don't have to really drink much to be over the limit. So that being said, this goes down. They recognize he's over the limit. They ask him to put his hands behind his back. And that's when the resistance starts to come. Now, I have personally, that I can count right off the top of my head, I have personally been handcuffed five times in my life by police officers. You got me beat. Yeah. Uh, four times in the United States <laughs> <laughs> and once in North Mexico by uh, Mexican police. It wasn't a comfortable situation. Uh, five times. First time I was 18 years old, and then things went on. I, I got a history. I got a past. I've done all kind of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, How many times do you resist? Never. When, even when I knew I wasn't guilty. Okay. And there were, in those situations, there were all, every single one of the police officers, with the exception of maybe two, I, one for sure, one was an asshole. One was an asshole. He, was, he meant to be an asshole. He was trying to be an asshole. And if I saw him to this day, I'd call him an asshole because he was being an asshole. But the rest of them were perfectly fine, perfectly respectful towards me. But even the asshole did not do anything to me in terms of any show of force because I turned around and put my hands behind my back mm -hmm. and he handcuffed me. They put me in a car. They searched my truck. They did the whole thing. Um, Cause that's normal procedure. If you're under the suspicion of drinking and driving, I was under the suspicion of it. I was not drinking and driving just to be clear. <laughs> Although I have to be fair and to be honest. And so have most of you. But the point is, I didn't resist. This guy resisted. He went into an all-out fight. And I know there's folks who watch those videos and say, well, I would have done this, I would have done that, and I would have done this. 
I have been watching too many movies. Right. First of all, if you think like fights that happen in <clears> movies, <throat> like that's what a fight looks like in the street. That ain't what a fight looks like in the street where people stand back and punch each other. No, it's a scrap. It's a scuffle. Mm -hmm. You wind up on the ground. It's a wrestling match is what it turns out. If you get a couple of uh, punches in, eh, you're doing pretty good. But you don't just go out there and start punching people. You don't see people like they do in the movies where you're kicking some dude in the balls and the guy gets right back up and keeps on fighting. That doesn't happen in real life. So you think you know how you'd react. But when you are carrying, uh, first of all, these police officers have about 65 pounds of gear on them. Um, their mobility is limited. They're wearing uh, mm -hmm. body armor. They're wearing all of this stuff, the belts, tactical stuff, all these things that are on there. They have, they got, you know, extra magazines. They got guns. They got tasers. I mean, they're, they're, their mobility is limited. So now you got a guy who's free and clear and, and, and can move and mobilize, and you're wrestling this guy, and he's not just some weakling. I mean, he's a grown man, right? Um, and he's desperate. Sure. Because he wants to get away. He's scared. And, and under the influence of and alcohol. And he's under the influence, which gives you an element of strength in a lot of cases. Um, there's no inhibitions. This guy wants to get free. That's what happens with desperate people. It's like a you, you put an animal in the corner. They're going to do everything they can to get out. So these guys suddenly find themselves in a situation they don't want to be in. Um, and they're having to think immediately in the circumstance what do we do and all of a sudden the guy winds up with your taser which by the way a police uh taser you have to have a permit for that i mean that's a special taser you hit somebody the wrong way with that thing you can kill mm -hmm. them it can be lethal so you know and the guy takes off running across the parking lot they're chasing him and you see in the video he turns with what is the taser and fires back at the cop, and he shoots him. Tragic, and he dies. Here come all the experts, right? Here come all the experts. And we can talk about that in, the, in the upcoming segments, but you don't, there's a lot of things you don't know in that instant, in that moment of action. The guy runs off with your taser, and then he turns around with something to shoot back at you. How do you know he's not carrying a thirty eight in his... Mm -hmm. pocket or in his in his belt or something maybe he's concealed you don't know uh there's a lot of variables that are there and then then when i hear this morning you know i, I hear a, a headline that says it's ruled a homicide i'm like okay we're already starting to really jump to some conclusions the officer was immediately terminated i know that we are in some volatile times with race situations but there's a lot of stuff to unpack, and we're not going to spend our entire time on that. But I want to say a little bit more about that, and we'll do it when we come back. Well, 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 well. I had Candace. I said, you know, I told her, I said, pull, pull some stuff. I want some information on the U.K., on Britain. Because, obviously, their police officers, by and large, don't carry, you know, firearms like our police officers mm -hmm. do. Um, pretty specialized aspects of police that are carrying the firearms over there. And I was like, you know, is it illegal in England, let's say, to resist arrest? What's, what's their policy? And you were saying not illegal to resist arrest. Correct. So from what I found, it was not illegal to resist arrest, but it was, however, illegal to help others resist arrest. So you cannot prohibit an officer from completing their job. Yeah. But if that job is arresting you, you can technically resist arrest. So. <laughs> hmm. Okay. And, and I, I welcome our, uh, our listeners and viewers from across the mm -hmm. pond to send us a message. Um, let me know. I would I would love to know. Uh, you printed off some stuff. You, you kind of goes into the detail of, of all the different categories and things like that. Where's my glasses? Put this thing on here and see if we can see. But uh, there's different categories of the the determines the offense. I like how they spell it. offense. O f f e n c e. I kind of went um, Irish on that. I don't know. <laughs> 
But you know, what do you do, Steve? I, I want you're 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 an expert. No, nah, on you, getting arrested. Okay, let's go back to the Rashad guy. Yeah. If you're if you're trying to incapacitate a police officer that's trying to arrest you and you get shot, I'm I don't feel bad for you. It, it sucks, but at some point you made a choice to pull his device from him mm -hmm. and then turn to use it on him. Or if anything's pointed at you, if the person you're trying to detain points anything, I, I thought the training was that you have to protect yourself. I thought that you did shoot to kill. And I mean, did I, he, maybe I'm uh, wrong. Did, now, did no. he unload nine rounds in him or did he just put a couple of rounds in him? I mean, did he show control? In that manner? Uh, you know, I, okay, so just knowing some police officers from the past, I don't know what the policy procedure or the training is per se, but I know that in various cases I've heard different ones say, and they've painted out different scenarios where they say, you shut that down. Right. I mean, you you shoot to kill. Yeah. Which in, in many cases, and I've seen various videos and different things that have been out where – they're empty in the magazines. I mean, yeah. it's like there's and lethal they use of force, which I also have friends who have discharged their firearm and have either been put under disciplinary measures for having done so or even terminated. And, and so it's gotten harder and harder to discharge a firearm as law enforcement officer um, without some major consequences. You know, so again, you go back and you see these movies like Lethal Weapon, right? These guys are killing seven people a day, and then they're back on the force tomorrow killing seven more. It just, that ain't how it works, right? It, it, there's a lot of stuff. You, you are usually relieved of duty, pending an investigation. Uh, all these different things Let's happen. See, even if you discharge your firearm and don't hit someone, yeah. you're put on administrative. Yeah, you know. exactly. So, I mean, you pull, it out of your, you pull it out of your holster and you fire it in the ground on accident. Yeah, you're in trouble. So I, when I read that that officer was immediately terminated like that, um, you know, my first response is, okay, you just had the George Floyd thing, and Derek Chauvin, you know, he was out for a while before they arrested him, and it's like, we're not going to have that blowback anymore. We're just going to immediately terminate the guy. But it didn't say anything pending an investigation. My first thought was, was he terminated because the guy got his taser? right because okay. that procedurally that's a bad deal anything can happen i realize that but you are trained to carry those those instruments those weapons those firearms i should say i got the burps um and now everybody knows but you're still you're supposed to keep those in your possession and the fact that it was taken away from him i mean i can see some disciplinary measure that comes out of that but termination on something well, like that the and this mayor is, immediately came out and said it was unjustified and fired him. So let me just say what many people out there who have never been in that situation would say. Well, he could have shot him in the leg. <clears throat> yeah, that's not, that, that doesn't even enter into the debate. If somebody turns towards you, you know they've got a weapon, but somebody turns towards you um, with a weapon and they fire it, your first thought isn't, I'm going to shoot him in the leg. It's hard enough to hit somebody in the body with a pistol, okay, mm -hmm. with a handgun. Hard enough to shoot. You don't believe me? Go to the range and try it with something sitting still. Put the paper target out there at 15 yards, and let's see how accurate you think you are, Mr. Leg Shooter. Let's go out there and see. Now, I understand these are police officers who train. They go to the range. They, they practice. They're, they have training. There's a lot of training. And then add adrenaline. You add all that stuff. You, I mean, this is this is a hot shooting. and heavy thing. <laughs> I, I I mean, I'm I'm going to go out again on the limb as I want to do and sometimes regret, but I don't think that these police officers, police officers were immediately going, you know what, he's a black guy, let's kill him. I, I I don't think that came into play at all. And I can speak if that were my husband and I saw somebody point something back at him, aim it at him, you don't know what it is, and if his training was shoot to kill and then he got fired for the training they give gave him. That's a lawsuit. I, mean, I, he could come I back, agree 100%. That, that police officer could come back and file a lawsuit against the city. I am anti, as we all are, anti-police harassment, 
police brutality. Yes. I am anti all those things. And yes, there are police out there. You know you're assholes. I've already called you an asshole. You're an mm-hmm. asshole. You just keep getting protected by the department. You get, get protected by bureaucracy. You get protected by your chief. And there's a very small percentage of you. But you know who you are. You're out there. Okay. I'm against you. I'm against you. I've, I have said it for 30 years. The two jobs in America that need to be more uh should should be more receive more training mm-hmm. and harder to get and should also get compensated more is law enforcement and school teachers school teachers those are two jobs that in my opinion for the responsibility they carry are too easy to get and they don't get paid enough when they do the job so i'm on your side let me just go out and say but I'm also one of the chief critics. I'm a chief critic of an educator, and I'm a chief critic of a police officer. So let me just tell you, you're out there. There's a lot of you out there. I'm, a, I'm anti-police brutality. I don't care what race comes into play. I don't care about that. I'm anti. Mm-hmm. If you have authority, you need to be responsible with that authority, however you use it. And if you have the ability to discharge lethal force, you really need to be responsible. The good cops will say exactly what you said right they don't want the bad cops they in there don't want either. them there right and i've had several on my social media over the weekend who have reached out to me and say no chad you're being too gracious hmm. on your percentages you're being way too gracious there are more more bad cops than what you're saying and i'm like i understand but that is not the point i'm not here to argue statistics i'm here to talk about uh, a whole other issue mm-hmm. which i'll touch on <laughs> in the next segment let's go back we'll be right back Sometimes I sit around and I think about what I've said in the segment prior, and I'm like, boy, if that was ever taken out of context, if I was Donald Trump, (laughs) they would crucify me. Chad Prather, host on Blaze TV, says cops are assholes. Uh, Just just a couple of percentage points. Um, Clip it just right. Yeah. And say whatever. I'm I'm pro-police. I mean, we got the shirt out there, defend police. Uh, I have had people who have come at me because they think that it says defund police. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. like, read, read. I didn't defund take it what you said that way at all. Matter. I think people understand. I we've They seen do. It. Anybody with a half a brain, but that doesn't matter anymore. Um, it, I agree, Steve. If you resist arrest, especially if you take a weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, resisting arrest, that's one thing. I mean, you want to fight somebody. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. All you got to do, you got to go look no further than some of these videos of the altercations between protesters. And they're not protesters. They're rioters and looters. The protesters aren't the ones out there fighting the police. I saw they had protest yesterday all over Dallas-Fort Worth. They had protest. I was watching the live video of the protest in Fort Worth. Um. You know, everybody wearing the shirt that said, F your flag. Now, see, I, I take offense to that, but I'm okay. I'll live. Those were peaceful protests. Walking down the street, fists in the air, making their statement. That's fine. There's no alter. They're not setting anything on fire. They're not breaking glass. But then when you see that happen and there's an altercation with police, and I've seen them, I've seen it happen a lot in the last two weeks. A lot of videos, you go down and look at that Miami video where those black guys got out of the car and just started whooping ass of those people that were banging on their car and they were black cops, right? So all you got to do is look at those altercations. I've seen several where people are busting the windows out of cop vehicles and the cops just turn around and drive out. If they wanted to, they could just get out and just start popping off rounds, but they're not doing that. Okay. They're not doing that. But in this situation, the guy resists arrest and you're right. It would be a lawsuit. Yes. It's my family. That's a lawsuit. Yes. That's the point I was trying to make. If you, if you, if, if you are in that situation, I'm against police brutality, but when a police officer does their job, I'm going to support that, regardless of the color of the perpetrator's skin or the outcome. I'm going to support that. If this had been a lily white man running away from him, I would have said, shoot the guy just the same way. I feel sorry. I don't think this guy knew that his night was going to turn out that way when he when he drank margaritas and then mm-hmm. decided to go and have a Wendy's late at night. That's tragic. 
that this guy felt that level of desperation that he had to fight two police officers, try to get away, and running away through the parking lot, and he turns and fires back at them with a taser? I mean, what are you thinking, dude? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? You know you're going to get shot in that situation. Tragic. And I, I wish we lived in a world where that would never happen. You know, someone, a good friend, sent me a message this morning. One of the messages I woke up to said, can, can you please address, is there nothing we can do? I'm sick of reading this. Is there nothing that can be instituted that is non-lethal, whether it's rubber bullets or whatever? And I'm like, no. No. I mean, as you have to match what can potentially come against you. Correct. You have to be able to match force for force. Remember when the bank robbers had those AK-47s or whatever it was back in L.A. and they had the standoff with the police and they mm -hmm. were it was that street shootout. You could see it from the helicopter. And the police were sorely overmatched by the bank robbers. And it was a, it was a feeding frenzy. It was a bloodbath. The, and that's when they started instituting the change. You have to be able to match force for force. And that's the situation. So then you get into the whole gun control debate, which we don't, we're not getting into. Um, and let me just say, and I posted a video. I just kind of, I was sitting at my desk working last night. Uh, Sunday night, it was late. I'd had a, I'd sipped a little tequila. Uh, just a little sip, Steve. Just a little sip. A bit. You know, about that much. Sipped it. And I just had a thought, and I just popped my camera phone up there, I leaned it against the computer, a monitor, and I hit record, and I just thought, I got something on my mind, and I don't really know what how to formulate it. So I just said, these defund the police people who want to live in these autonomous zones like we're seeing in mm. Seattle and Minneapolis that wants to have a whole new, you know, I, I tweeted over the weekend. I said, hey, kids, now you can go out and play social workers versus robbers. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what you're asking for, yeah. you know, because now cops are a bad thing. Right. You know, live PD is canceled. Cops. Cops is canceled. Paw Patrol. Well, they say the Paw, Paw Patrol thing was more of a, uh, a hoax thing. It was, it was more no. of a rumor that got out there. They're not really going to do it. but I believe it. I it's think there funny. was some. I was think funny. there was some talk about getting rid of Chase on Paw Patrol. <laughs> Paw Patrol is after my days of parenting little ones right mm -hmm. so I, 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 yeah. i'm not familiar with it uh i am now though i am i blame i blame paw patrol for all things ill in society now black <laughs> trans lives matter i blame paw patrol for their oppression uh you know they've taken away elmer fudd's gun yosemite sam's gun marvin the martian still has his damn gun why are you why are you letting an illegal alien have a gun <laughs> I'm trying to figure this one out. All right. Well, look at I, all the video games. Call of Duty, they still got all their guns. I'm trying to figure it out. Is this uh, new material for you? Because I, 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 that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I, oh, air bump it. There it is. That's good. Um, did they really take Elmer's gun away? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. He's hunting. Rabbits. 2020, folks. You're offended by cartoons. Mm. You remember when Elmer Fudd used to shoot Daffy Duck in the face? And blow his, yeah. bill and his, and his bill went around and spun around and ended up backwards. <laughs> and I mean, we didn't think, oh my God, I'm going to go out and shoot somebody in the face. Correct. Because that's just not the way it works, right? Um, but these folks that want to defund the police and like, okay, we're just going to, we're going to settle this thing out socially and, um, you know, conflict resolution, all that stuff. And what I said in the video is, you guys have no idea how much the police are keeping certain forces at bay mm -hmm. that are out in this world. Because if you think, if you think that everybody's just inherently good, you're deceived. Man's inhumanity to man for thousands of years have proven us wrong. People are mean to other people. And I promise you, those of you in the so-called oppressed community, you remove the police, and there's some vigilante justice out there hiding up in them hills that they're waiting for permission to come do some wicked stuff. I don't advocate for that, but I'm telling you it exists. Mm -hmm. It exists. So be careful what you wish for. The hills have eyes, people. And if you think old boy up in the hills don't know what's going on, 
you go try to mess with him and his, you're going to find out a different story. There's a lot of America that you're not seeing represented on CNN. A lot of America. So you better be careful because you remove that thin blue line that you think is supposedly oppressing you, and you might find out what real oppression is. Mm. Now, I don't say that in any way, shape, or form as a threat from this show, this network, me, or any of these individuals in the studio. I'm just telling you that's what's out there. Mm -hmm. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you there is an evil that lurks among us. It's out there. There are some folks who are tired of your stuff. They're tired of the baloney. They're tired of the crap. There's people out there, they ain't happy that you guys are now controlling the narrative and controlling their lives and creating limitations that they have to put up with and explain to their children. They ain't th- I mean, you know, they're, they're that way. And it, you know what? It ain't, it ain't just white folk either. There's a lot of folks out there that are just sick of the garbage. And the way I said it is, I said, you, you don't want to get rid of the shepherds because there's a lot of wolves out there that are tired of your Twitter sheep shit, mm-hmm. right? And you'll find out that Twitter ain't real life and Hollywood ain't real life. Uh, the mainstream media ain't real life. What's going on in Seattle, that ain't real life. Uh, they're just letting that nonsense play out. I mean, why do they that's, even still have electricity or water? Yeah, or that's just anything? mentally would, ill people. I would block everything. Because they're Democrats running the country, or running the, 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 the city in a whole Sad. world. It's, it's, it's a mess. So I'm just saying, folks, be careful what you wish for. Uh, we need law enforcement. We do. Can changes be made? Yeah, changes can be made, and there's a lot of things. I've said it. Needs to be a harder job to get. Needs to be more training. Needs to be better compensated. A lot of things mm-hmm. need to go into it. Uh, but anyway, that's another episode. Be right back. I highly recommend everybody go back to last week and watch the episode that we did where I pulled the marker board out and just really rushed through all of that. But remember, there's powers that be, powers that be. They want more power. They want more control. They're going to make sure that they keep tossing a bone out to the mainstream media who's going to keep fanning the flames because they're making more money and getting more influence. And we, the American people, are getting sandwiched in between the uh, everything from the protest groups, special interest groups, and all these different political action groups. It's, it's a crazy, crazy deal. Be careful out there, folks. Uh, it's a crazy world. And, you know, I've never liked that philosophy of it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, somebody sent me a message and said, what are you doing about racism in America? And I said, not being a freaking racist. I mean, I can only be for me, right? I can, not, I can teach my kid not to be a freaking racist. Um, it, 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 that's just never crossed my mind to function that way, but some people do. I get that. Uh, be careful. God bless the law enforcement officers in America. If you've ever been to one of my live shows, um, I've taken my hat off to you. God bless you guys. There's a lot of folks out there that do a really good job, work hard, and they just want to come home to their families after a shift and, and, and do right in between. So we're praying for you, uh, and we're going to continue to do so. And uh, we pray some resolution to all this crazy stuff that's out there. Go to blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Get your subscription. Don't forget, check us out on Pluto TV. Blaze is on channel 250. All the good stuff is there every night at 6 p.m. That's right. Leave us a rating and review where podcasts are offered. Don't forget, like this video on YouTube and share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. We're better than our ratings are showing right now, even though we're not doing too bad. I love y'all. God bless you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you.